Hello there, YouTube. How are you doing today? In yesterday's sketchbook habit episode, we looked at the stunning shimmering gold Paul Rubens mini palette. And before that, we explored the Paul Rubens watercolor tubes while comparing those to the pink tin pan version. So today we are playing with the student grade tube version. Woohoo! Last fall, I ordered these on AliExpress, and instead of picking up a whole set, I selected a handful of single tubes, that way I can sample the formula. Uh, I pretty much picked up a split primary color wheel, plus paints gray to spoil myself, because I really do enjoy seeing how companies take on this color. Today, I'll be using a flower palette to try out these colors because I'm not ready to commit to a formal palette. I want to make sure I love these first. Uh, so the colors I have going from left to right on my palette is the Permanent Lemon Yellow, Azo Yellow Deep, Permanent Red Light, Cornacridone Rose, Ultramarine Deep, Thalo Blue, and Payne's Gray. By the way, I am swatching in two sketchbooks at the same time, uh, the Pink Paul Rubens 100% Cotton and the Stillman & Burn Beta Edition, which is the blue cover. And the reason why I am doing this is because cotton paper makes everything just look great. Even like the crummiest of paints, it will just <laughs> make it look glorious. For student grade paints, I think the color payoff is great. And uh, just a little reminder, uh, these are fresh paint swatches. Um, they're going to look a lot juicier and vibrant compared to dried up paint on the palette, so just keep that in mind. Um, the biggest thing I noticed while swatching is that my rinsing water started to look a bit hazy, giving me an indicator of how much filler are in these paints. For example, uh, you can kind of see this silver-ish suspended cloud floating in the water. Um, huge heads up, uh, yes, you can have murky, opaque water because certain pigments are just, you know, opaque by nature. So yes, that can cause the water to be murky, but that's different compared to what's going on here. So Chalky Filler has this dollar diffused look to it and it kind of looks like a cotton ball pulled apart and then shoved in water and it also lacks the vibrancy because there's less pigment and more filler so I hope that little rundown gives you some things to look out for when you're experimenting with your watercolors and if you ever find that there's just not enough color payoff this may help you out in the right direction.
Alrighty, so what do I think about these paints? Um, I haven't spent enough time to do a full review, especially since I haven't tested how these paints perform once the paint dries in the palette. And to be honest, they're okay. Um, they are way better than the Arteza watercolors. Those were so chalky and gritty that it destroyed my brushes. And um, I do feel the weight and the lethargic flow of the fillers in this particular student grade Paul Rubens, but it's not enough that it makes me want to pull out my hair in frustration. Um, but to all my viewers that have Daniel Smith and other high-end brands, just skip over these because you know it's up. You 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 have the good stuff. Have fun. For more brand comparisons, uh, let's say the Windsor Newton Cotman Pan Travel Set. Um, I think we all know that I don't like that. If you don't know, I don't like it. <laughs> but of course, like any fresh two paint, will beat that set any day. But the Cotman Two versions, that I'm not sure about. Um, those were my first paints, you know, in high school and college. Other, you know, my first real paints, not the Crayola ones. Um, my memory is a bit fuzzy on how those perform. Maybe one day I should try those out and maybe I might like them or I have like nostalgia factor kicking in. Um, maybe, we shall see. And for Reeves, I really don't know because I haven't tried those in years either. Uh, but what I really do appreciate about the Paul Rubens student version is that you can actually pick up the tubes individually. Like the Reeves, you can't, you have to buy them in sets. And I really adore the size of the Paul Rubens. It's five milliliters. I think this is the perfect amount to explore because by the time you use it up, you will be ready to upgrade to something nicer. Plus, you can't beat the price of 90 cents per tube. Like, that's such a bargain. That's such a great deal. And um, it is a little bit challenging to find these online, though. I've only seen them on AliExpress. They may be on eBay. I don't really do eBay. I kind of suck at that. Um, you will have to scour the internet for information, especially about pigments, because it's not listed on the product page or the Paul Rubens website. Oh, but yes, on that note, uh, this... This was a little weird how this happened. Um, so when I initially purchased these watercolors, I was aiming for single pigments with semi-transparent quality so I could do portraiture. And it turns out that Paul Rubens uses the same designer name. Um, a designer name is essentially a fancy name to label a color. For example, sap green. That's not a pigment or a designated certain name. Like, how would you say? Not all sap greens are the same. Any hoozles. Um, Paul Rubens uses the same name for both the student and professional line, but using different pigments. And this gets a little complicated. Uh, for example, in the professional line, the permanent lemon yellow is PY3, where the student grade is PY84. So uh, PY3 is semi-transparent and PY84 is semi-opaque. So both of these pigments are going to behave differently in mixes. So um, yeah, heads up. Uh, they don't really use the word hues in any of their marketing, branding, are labeling in the Paul Rubens products, so it's a bit misleading. Ah, uh, I got misled. <laughs> Since I wasn't sure how I felt about this particular set of watercolors, I did some extra observations in natural lighting comparing the student grade with my other Paul Rubens sets, and there was one striking difference that I noticed with the Quinacridone Rose, the student grade, um, PV19, compared to the professional grade rose red pv19 um, the pv19 for the professional grade is very saturated vivid it has so much luminosity where compared to the student grade um, especially when it's thinned out you can see that the color is dull and it just it lacks that punch Overall, I don't think these paints are bad. I think they're actually pretty decent, especially for the price. I just want to, you know, lay out all the details for folks who are interested in buying these paints. I just want to let you know what you're getting yourself into. So um, if you're looking for bright, punchy colors, look elsewhere, maybe the Primas. But if you want to try watercolor without dishing out all the moolahs, maybe this is for you. Um, it really does depend on your location and if these are easily accessible. For me, they're not really available here in the States. Um, but yeah, um, I hope that was helpful. Uh, let me know if you want to see the dried paint versions of the student grade in tomorrow's episode. 
uh, just to kind of further this exploration because for you, I'll make it happen. Thank you so much for joining me here today in Sketchbook Habit Day 7. It was a pleasure having you here. Um, I'm pretty stoked about this week. I think there are a lot of great things are going to happen. So uh, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Keep on drawing and have an excellent day, okay? Bye! Do you there like are other qualities? I like the purple. Oh, it's, <laughs> but the violet. What do you think about these? I like the piece of it. Um, Not the artwork, the paints. These, they're still good. They look less vibrant than the other ones. Do they? They look like they have more um, texture to them, though, or mm. granularity. Yeah, yeah. Any other words? Just this about it. Which ones do you prefer? These ones. What are the other ones? The student grade? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, these look lower quality. Are you saying my art is lower quality? Yes, 100%. <laughs>